Hello, everyone, and welcome to Tuesday. Welcome back to Thomas. Welcome to um, um, Saturday. Because I'm on vacation. Oh, I see. Every every day is Saturday when you're on vacation. Listen, have the mindset that every day is your favorite day. I mean, Tuesday is my favorite day. Is it really your favorite day? I love Tuesdays, yeah. Okay. Tuesday is actually a really good day. Okay. Because it's... Oh, is that the... Is that the... Um, is Tuesday the... Uh, Rachel... It was Rachel Tuesday. But here's a little... Here's a little insider secret. We got some... We got some... We got some special things coming up. We're going to be having a brand new thing. It's going to be on Mondays. I can't wait. Thomas joins us for breakfast stream. Um, breakfast stream is now over. Uh, and that breakfast stream will be out by the time you see this video. Obviously, it's a good one. It's a it's a good one. It's a good it's a, it's it's a, a really good one. good one. Even if you don't normally watch breakfast stream, it's a good I, one. it's it's pretty good. I think you'd enjoy it. Um, now we're going to go grab some lunch, and then that'll be the last we see of Thomas because you've got other Ever. I'm retiring. Wow. Anyway, I'm just jock. <laughs> Our timing on that was perfectly in sync. We have the same. We're, we're working on that. We're working on it. Um, that's just the. That's just. That's just the content. Uh, we're gonna meet. Uh, we're gonna go get some lunch. We're gonna meet Dan also because Dan's available. Lindsay unfortunately has to work. She's got meetings. Uh, but we'll meet up with Dan. The four of us will have some lunch before Thomas has to head uh, ultimately back down to Florida. You're not going to. Day when he, but you've got other things going on. Got He's got stuff to do. Okay, that's fine. Just do it. Just do it. Do it. Do it. Oh, Jesus. Almost. You tried. You tried. Nice. Thomas, can you do it? First try? First try. First try. First I try. A million subs. First try. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now you try. This is a different one. Oh. Uh, we went to Clark. I'm it. standing next to this giant food. We went to Clark's for lunch. Uh, it was good. Who did I, what order did I film it in? I don't know. Dan had a crab cake sandwich. Thomas had a Cubano with mashed potatoes. Mal did a, uh, a salad. And I did uh, tacos with ahi tuna. It was really good. It was nice. But unfortunately, we really, yeah, I don't know why I decided to stand here. You could move. I could. I'll move. Okay, this is way better. We're further away from the... All right. It's hot now. I'm dying. It's hot, I know. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Thomas, I don't know when we're going to see you next. Who knows? I hate that. What? I want to I want to see you again. I'm melting. That's not that surprising. It's that hot. Dan's dead. Thomas, we'll see you whenever we see you. I love um, that. And I guess we'll see you then. Bye, bud. Sailor Moon. Pew. Where did he go? He's gone. Did you know that they, they made these? Look at these things. Butterfinger Bites. We went to, um, we went to the, the Dollar Tree the other day because I was craving Bunch of Crunch. Why? I don't know. But they didn't want to go to the movie theater where it costs a jillion dollars. I'd rather pay a dollar. And uh, I picked up Bunch of Crunch, which was excellent, by the way. But they also had these, and I was like, oh, man. That sounds good. I love I love Butterfingers. Uh, you know what I miss um, from when I was younger? Butterfinger BBs. Those aren't still around, right? Those are gone? I think those are gone. Let me open these up. Well, these are smaller than the box advertises. Holy Jesus. <laughs> They're so small. They're about the size of a Chex Mix. I haven't had a Butterfinger in a long time. Anyway, we're not here to talk about Butterfingers. It was great to see Thomas. Loved hanging out with Thomas on Sunday. And then also today. But after he left, I had work to do. God, Butterfingers get stuck in your teeth. Holy crap. I think I had forgotten. Jesus, I had one piece. Okay. Alright. I feel like you gotta swallow those things. 
Anyway, all right. I had a lot of work to do today. Um, amongst the work was a first 20 stream. So I am going to tell you about the games that I played in Ju June 2021. Did I already do, hold on. Does this video exist? Okay, no. <laughs> there is the games I played in June 2020, but not the games I played in June 2021. Cool, we're good. I couldn't remember the last uh, first 20 stream I did. I was like, was it in June? I don't know, it doesn't matter. Anyway, I played five games today. Let me tell you about them. First game I played was Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 plus 2 for the Switch. This is a game that came out um, last August uh, for basically everything but Switch. I didn't play it when it came out, but I was aware that it was, it was, it was out and that folks really, really enjoyed it. Um, I remember uh, Dan picked it up and uh, really enjoyed it. I was interested, and I actually requested a key at the time, and I did not get one. Um, I might have been a little too slow, or a little too small, one or the other, they decided not to give me a key. Uh, for the Switch version though, I didn't even request a key, and I got a key just out of nowhere. So I was like, you know what, cool. This is actually better anyway, because the Switch version, is, you know, it's it's mobile, it's something I could take on the go, and it's something I realistically think that I will play through on my own time. Um, you know, if I'm on an airplane or something, somewhere I have time to sit down. I love the Tony Hawk series. I was a huge Tony Hawk fiend. Um, I bought the games on launch, and I just adored them. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to report that it's everything you like from Tony Hawk 1 and 2. It's all the levels, the, the game plays the same, it just has a new coat of paint on it, but in a good way. It's it's so easy for for companies to screw that sort of thing up, and from what I can tell, they didn't. It, it looks really good. Um, it also runs really well on the Switch, which is another concern. Uh, I don't believe it's targeting 60. I think it's targeting 30, but it's fine. It's totally fine. Uh, you know, if you want the, the best picture quality, then yeah, okay, play it on PC or PS5 or whatever. But it runs on Switch, it runs well enough, and um, I'm, I'm actually kind of happy that the, the version that I, I covered was the Switch version, because again, I'll probably play through the rest of this at some point, because I, I love the Tony Hawk games. After that, I covered a game called Worms Rumble, and, and I, I saw this in the Nintendo Direct. It was the first I had heard of it. The game just came to Switch, but this is another situation where the game has actually been out on other platforms for a while. It is a Battle Royale Worms game. And it's it's pretty notable because I'm a huge fan of the Worms series. I have, I, I absolutely have more than a thousand hours into the series. Maybe a thousand hours just into Worms Armageddon for the N64. I love that game. Played it a lot. The Worms games are all pretty similar. They're tactical turn-based games with a, with a destructible environment. This is completely different because this is a real-time uh, battle royale game. So it's the first Worms game where you, you you don't have a turn. You don't take a turn and take your time doing what you want to do. Uh, it's also online, so I had to play online. It's extremely chaotic, but it was it was pretty fun. You know, it. I haven't played a lot of battle royale games. The ones that I have played and am familiar with are 3D games, they're either third or, or first person shooters. So taking that same concept and applying it to a 2D plane is interesting. And I think that for, for what they have, it's relatively successful, but I do feel like a lot of the reason I liked it was that I was already familiar with the Worms franchise. When I got weapons, I already knew what they did because they were largely weapons that were sampled from the other games. So I don't know, your mileage may vary. If you're a Worms fan, I would check it out. Um, if you're not a Worms fan, it might be worth checking out because it's just something that's really different. Um, but yeah, it, it's probably not going to leave a lasting mark, but it, I, it would be fun if I could get a bunch of keys together to do maybe a video with, uh, with Steven and Friends. Uh, I don't know actually if it works that way. I think you can get a squad. So I could probably get a team of four and do something like that, but... Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know that it's set up in such a manner where you can just get a deathmatch of, like, all your friends. Maybe not. Anyway, it was neat. 
it was different. It was, you know, that's and that's the reason I wanted to play it too. But that was also a uh, that was also a dev key. Also, Proton John's head was in it. Didn't expect that, but life comes at you fast. Uh, next up, we had uh, Chicory, a colorful tale, and this was uh, given to me by a doodle, who was uh, very passionate about about this game, and I can see why. It's cute. It's wholesome, and it has like, the main mechanic behind it is is painting. So it's definitely up, up our alley, uh, because you know Mal's a painter, and uh, it was, it was just, it was really well done. Um, there's, I don't know. In the last few years, it feels like it's almost a new genre or subgenre of these, these cute games which have like a really slick sense of humor, um, really good uh, self awareness of what they're trying to be and the the market they're trying to hit, and um, Chicory has that. Uh, it, it, it also, along that same subgenre, it deals with um, some more mature uh, uh, themes, uh, like you, there's definitely some elements of depression, but also doing it from the perspective of like an artist, so kind of like into like a like artist block and, and, and the struggle with uh, creative burnout. And I picked up on all that in just like the first 30 minutes, so you know I'm sure as the game progresses, there's even more of that. But um, still cute, fun to play, and uh, you also get to paint the world. And it's co-op. I didn't play it co-op today, but it's uh, it's got co-op elements too. And the music was uh, was killer. The music is done by the same person that does uh, Celeste. And um, yeah, overall it was just it was it was a really it was a really good one to play. I think a lot of folks that watch our stuff will really enjoy it. Um, so if you don't know anything about it, gotta check out the, the first 20 that we did when you get a chance. And again, thanks to Audoodle for, for sending that to us, because I was I was only vaguely aware of it. It was vaguely on my radar, um, but not in a, a huge way. But uh, yeah, it, it definitely deserves some love because it's, it's, it's unique. It's very, very cool. Uh, so after that, I played, uh, well, I took a, I took a poll to decide what I should play, and uh, everyone decided on Songbird Symphony, which is a uh, game that was given to me by Jam. And uh, Songbird Symphony is it's a it's a two D it's it's a bit of a platform puzzler, but the the big thing is that it's got a bunch of um, rhythm mechanics. So you keep as you as you progress through this world. You uh, keep stumbling across little, almost like miniature boss fights, but all the boss fights are um, different uh, rhythm games. Uh, and I, honestly, like at the beginning, it really felt like uh, like Elite Beat Agents in a way. And then as you progress, you're you're, you're doing um, you know similar 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 things that you're you're probably familiar with if you've played a variety of um, you know rhythm games. It was cute. It was cute. Uh, I, it strikes me as a game that's probably not terribly long, but uh, has a lot of character. Uh, the sprite works really pretty too. Um, I guess that's a, a, a subjective thing, but I really enjoyed it. I thought it was uh, I thought it was cute. Uh, the final game that we played this evening was uh, Scully, and this was also from Jam. Uh, we actually we did one poll and. The, the winning game was Songbird Symphony. The game that got the least amount of votes was Scully, and I decided to do Scully because I wanted to prove a point that all of the games are good, which is true. I don't even put a game, like, available to vote on unless it is something that has scored really well. I don't I don't want to play trash. I just don't. Uh, and Scully was something that, you know, even though it didn't get a lot of votes within the, the Twitch poll that we did, it did score well, so I wanted to play it and it was really fun. I'm glad that we played it. It, uh, originally I, I was thinking that it, it would feel very similar to Super Monkey Ball because the idea is that you play a, a skull that has come back to life. There's a little story involved, but the story's like, eh, the gameplay's more fun. But actually, after I started playing it, I realized that it felt much more, uh, much more similar to the Morph Ball sections of Metroid Prime. That was a much better way of describing how the game felt. And it was fun. It's extremely fast-paced. I mean, you can really get to moving. There's jumping, so there's there's these, you know, this 3D platforming element, but also you're basically a marble, so like you have to 
think about, you know, how fast you're going and stopping on a dime and like, uh, you know, where you are in 3D space, but also like in the air. And uh, the controls would be very easy to screw up in a game like this. And I can safely say they're extremely responsive, um, which is wonderful because when you, when you have something like this, you need the controls to be good. And they're good, they're really good. There's also a separate side to the game where like you, you you know you're playing as the morph ball as the skull for most of it but then occasionally you run into these little pits which is they're your checkpoints are how you restore health but also you can become these little men that are much slower and you know they they have other things that they can do they can kill enemies they can uh, punch through walls they can lower bridges so they're they're helpful but they they break up that ball gameplay a little bit uh, it didn't seem to overstay its welcome from what I what I played. Um, and when I was was doing the stream, I talked a little bit about Sonic Unleashed syndrome, um, where you know Sonic Unleashed was a really fantastic game, and I really enjoyed the daytime segments. It was the part that I really liked, but it got bogged down by the nighttime segments, which I hated. Um, and I ultimately stopped playing the game when it came out. I got it when it came out. I, I stopped playing the game because I just I hated the nighttime segment so much. It was not the core gameplay loop that I enjoyed, and it was nothing like what I expected. Um, so I was worried a little bit as I was playing because I was thinking, I'm going fast, I'm having fun, this is cool, and it reminded me of Sonic Unleashed, especially whenever I got into the little pits and I was like, oh god, now I'm slow. But it seemed like it was fine. Um, the other thing that's very different from Sonic Unleashed is that at any point you can abandon the form that you have, so like you can make the little guys, and then you can press a button and you jump out and you're still the ball. And that's something that you couldn't do in, in Sonic. So those are the five games that we played. That covers us for the entire month of July. And that's really useful. Um, doing five games in a month is a lot, um, or in, in a stream. But the reason I did it is because July is actually really busy. And I'll be talking more about that as we get further into the month. But um, I, I needed I needed to do five. It, it was going to be a, a very big help if I if I did five. So I did, and they were fun. So thanks everyone who who, who contributed, um, Jam I'll Doodle, and then uh, to the the publishers who sent in the keys. It was a fun first twenty. I, I I like doing first twenty streams. I obviously am passionate about I mean video games, but then also interesting mechanics, things that you know you don't typically see. Um, peculiar ways of, of incorporating mechanics into the games. And uh, it, it's always really meaningful whenever I cover something and then someone tells me that they bought a game because they watched the stream or because they, they caught an episode on YouTube. I always really appreciate that. Because there's good games out there, but the problem is there's a jillion games out there and I want to make sure that we can amplify some of the interesting stuff so folks can find it and play it and enjoy it and maybe find something, you know, that uh, becomes a new... Uh, favorite game or top game of the year or something like that. Anyway, that's not the only thing I did, by the way. After I finished that stream, I recorded Grandpa's Game Garage. <laughs> I was feeling up to it, and I played some really crazy stuff. I'm not going to talk about it, but man, there's cool stuff on the way. Now that I'm done with all that... You're probably suspecting that it's late, and you're right, but I actually have to be up for a little bit longer because uh, the Fun Spot stuff comes out tomorrow, so I need to finish that vlog. That's partially why I opened up these. Because I was like, I want something to snack on. But they just, they get here into your molars, and it's, uh, it's actually terrible. It's fine. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, Let's meet back tomorrow, shall we?